Good morning and welcome to this Sunday service here in Cell Chapel and we're glad that you are joining us on our television station and those who will watch later on our YouTube channel. We have a lot of announcements to share with you today and as you see our altar is filled with flowers. Um, one of the bouquets on the altar with the roses is given in loving memory of Ethel Harris from her family who was, uh, whose service was here yesterday. One of the bouquets is also displayed in loving memory of John Stevens from his wife Phyllis. And the red and white bouquets are given in loving memory of Robert and Catherine Spangenberg and to honor National Fallen Firefighters Memorial Weekend. Today is Bells Across America Sunday and we honor those firefighters who died in the line of duty and we're going to have a special remembrance in our service today. But I also would share with you that one of those firefighters' helmet is displayed here on our organ this morning. Our outreach is for the crop walk and we invite you in two weeks to join us on October the 17th at the gazebo in the upper parking lot at Brosman as we walk for hunger. We will be raising money for the community food bank and also for the crop walk. And um, we invite you to come and take a walk. We'll walk to the Veterans Grove and back and we will stagger the start times and I would ask everyone to please wear a mask. We will celebrate communion today and um, from now on we will continue to do it the way that we are doing it. It is our hope and um, <clears throat> I share this with you. I think we're about this close to being able to be inside and start uh, worship. So. Uh, keep uh, listening and hanging in there with us, but today we will celebrate communion and on Sunday, on, on Wednesday, for those folks in our health care center, we will celebrate communion then. Today at uh, 2 o'clock and at 7 o'clock on 956 on our MVTV station, you can watch Pastor Faith and Jonathan um, do a program for you called A Gift of Music, and um, it will be available on Cell Chapel YouTube uh, if you're not able to tune in, and we thank uh, Jonathan and uh, Pastor Faith for putting that piece together. And tomorrow morning, starting at 7 o'clock, we hope to brighten your day as you begin or after you've eaten breakfast as we start a ministry moment uh, shown on 956 at uh, 7 and 845, it will be Monday through Friday and it will just be a small moment devotion uh, to get your day started. And we will not be doing the Tuesday, Thursday devotions at 11 o'clock anymore. Uh, this will take the place of those uh, times. And one of the reasons for that is all, the pastors are now able to do uh, devotions on all the neighborhoods in our health care center. So we're actually uh, with our folks there. And so we want to start your day with a little ministry moment uh, at 7 and 8.45. <clears throat> Let us take a moment now as we come to the Lord. And as we begin this day, I want to begin with the prayer that we might remember our president and all who have been affected by COVID-19 and lift them in our prayers this day. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do lift up to you the president of our nation and his family and all who have been affected in this past week, but not only in Washington, but across our nation and across our world. We know that many people have died. We know that many have been sick. And so we pray that you would watch over them. We put them in your precious care. 
And we pray that we would do what is right to keep others safe and that we might do our part so that less people have to suffer. We ask that you would bless all who are suffering from this disease and for the many who will continue to, who will get it. May we put them in your care, our world and our nation and ask a blessing upon them. This we ask in your name. Amen. And I invite you to join me for our call to worship. Gather to give thanks with your whole heart. Rejoice in God's love and faithfulness. God answers us when we call. Our Creator increases our strength of soul. Wait for God and hope in God's Word. Open your hearts to the Holy Presence in our midst. And let us join as we sing, My Lord, what a morning. Why do we pass judgment on our brothers and sisters? 
Why do we quarrel with those whose ways are different from our own? How can we despise another who is also a child of God? How can we ignore the suffering of other human beings? Surely we have much to confess to our God. Let us pray together our confession. We have been fools. We have said in our hearts there is no God. Our deeds deny you. Our plans do not include you. We grumble and complain criticizing those who embody love for all people. We have turned aside from the way you commanded. The world is full of suffering people whom we ignore. We ask your forgiveness. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. God has pity on us and releases us from the debts we have accumulated. In the great design of the universe, we are equipped to receive this forgiveness only when we extend it to others. Jesus points us to unlimited willingness to forgive, 70 times 7. How amazing is God's love for us and God's expectation of us. Amen. Across our land today, there will be bells rang in honor of those fallen firefighters. And today here in South Chapel, we will ring the, our bell three times. I also share this prayer with you today as we remember our fallen firefighters. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we bow before you today grieving the loss of firefighters who have died in the line of duty. We mourn the loss of these true heroes from our midst who gave their lives in the line of duty while protecting our lives, our homes, and our communities. Jesus says, Greater love is no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And these firefighters who answered the call to this difficult and dangerous task have shown love and commitment of the highest order for us. And for this, we are eternally grateful. We are fully aware that we can never repay the sacrifice of these courageous firefighters. We can never do anything to deserve their ultimate gift of service given to us at such great personal cost and given at such a great cost to their families. We can only acknowledge that they gave all for us. Help us to go forward today, having received from these short moments of prayer and meditation a small measure of personal aspiration to be like them in small daily ways. Help us to be inspired and to be changed by their self-sacrifice and their strength, their courage and their sense of duty. May we put our whole hearts into the tasks that we do, especially those that serve the greater good of our community. And may each small act of service we do be a living memorial to our fallen firefighters. Amen. And I share with you a little stone that has been presented to us. Greater love has no one than this. Amen.
offering our Ministry of Music today is Walter and Betsy Panko. And Betsy, I thank you for sharing your gift in such a beautiful song today. Our psalm for this Sunday is Psalm 80. It is begins with the seventh verse through the fifteenth. Restore us, O God of hosts, cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You have cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared room for it and caused it to take deep root, and it filled the land. The hills were covered with its shadow, and the mighty cedars with its boughs. She sent out her boughs to the sea and her branches to the river. Why have you broken down her hedges, so that all who pass by the way pluck her fruit? The boar out of the woods uproots it, and the wild beast of the field devours it. Return, we beseech you, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see, and visit this vine, and the vineyard which your right hand has planted, and the branch that you made strong for yourself. Here ends the reading of our psalm this day. May we join together as we confess the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come again to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Our Father is God to thee, of their liberty, to thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, thank God our The passage that we have today comes to us from St. Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 through 46. We hear these words. Hear another parable. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. And he leased it to vine dressers and went into a far country. Now when vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Again he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Then last of all, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the land, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to to those vine dressers? They said to him, 
He will destroy those wicked men miserably and lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the Scriptures the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. And whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but on whomever it falls, it will grind him into powder. Now when the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitudes because they took him for a prophet. May the Lord bless our hearing of the gospel this morning. How good a listener are you? Since you think about four times faster than a person usually talks, do you use this time to think about other things while you're keeping track of the conversation? Do you listen primarily for facts rather than ideas when someone is speaking? Do you avoid listening to things you feel will be too difficult to understand? Can you tell from a person's appearance and delivery that there won't be anything worthwhile said? When someone is talking Do you appear to be paying attention when you're not? Do certain words and phrases prejudice you so you cannot listen objectively? When listening, are you distracted by outside sights and sounds? Pastor, author Charles Swindoll or Chuck Swindoll once found himself with too, too many commitments In too few days, he got nervous and tense about it. In his book called Stress Fractures, he he shared the following story. He said, I was snapping at my wife and our children, choking down my food at mealtimes, and feeling irritated at those unexpected interruptions throughout the day. Before long, things around our home started reflecting the pattern of my hurry-up lifestyle, it was becoming unbearable. He said, I distinctly remember after supper one evening the words of our younger daughter, Colleen. She wanted to tell me something important that had happened to her at school that day. She began hurriedly, Daddy, I want to tell you something, and I'll tell you really fast. Suddenly realizing her frustration, Swindoll answered, Honey, you can tell me, and you don't have to tell me really fast. Say it slowly. He said, I'll never forget her answer. She said, Daddy, then listen slowly. Another story is told of President Franklin Roosevelt, who often endured long receiving lines at the White House. He complained that no one really paid attention to what was being said. So one day he decided to try an experiment during a reception. To each person that passed down the line and shook his hand, he murmured, I murdered my grandmother this morning. The guest responded with phrases like, Marvelous! Keep up the good work! We're proud of you. God bless you, sir. But it was not until the end of the line while greeting the ambassador from Bolivia that his words were actually heard. The ambassador leaned over and whispered to Roosevelt, I'm sure she had it coming. Robert Heron writes, Good listening is like tuning in to a radio station. For good results, you can listen to only one station at a time. He writes, trying to listen to my wife while looking over an office report is like trying to receive two radio stations at one time. 
I end up with distortion and frustration. Listening requires a choice of where I place my attention. To tune in to my partner, I must first choose to put away all that will drive away and divide my attention. That might mean laying down the newspaper, moving away from the dishes in the sink, putting down the book I'm reading or setting aside my projects. Jesus begins saying in this parable, hear another parable. Hear another parable. This is like us saying before we read the Scripture passage, hear the word of the Lord. Or may the Lord bless our hearing of His holy word. What does it look like to actively listen? To actively listen, we need concentration, commitment, courage. It takes concentration to listen closely. It takes commitment to listen to fine detail, even to boring detail, to interesting detail and challenging detail. It takes courage to actively listen. Why? Because actively listening demands a response and a reaction. I believe this is why Jesus says, hear another parable. Jesus wants the listener to decide how to relate to the parable. What lesson to take from it. Or who to decide who they're like in the parable. To learn from the parable. How many parables did Jesus tell in the Gospel? Well, depending on what version you use, 41 or 46 parables. Stories involving life lessons. Jesus begins, hear another parable or listen to another parable. Listen to what is written in the book of Romans. Many of you are familiar with this passage. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them. Today we're remembering on this Sunday the fallen firefighters. I think we should have a Sunday where we we remember preachers across the globe. I think of the value of preaching and it stumps me as to how important it is and how seminary tuitions and enrollments are beginning to decline across the globe. Why is this said? Faith comes from hearing and hearing through the Word of Christ. This is one of the reasons why we take it seriously that you hear us when we're sharing our messages. We see it in the commercials. Can you hear me now, right? Faith comes through hearing. The strengthening of our faith depends on hearing and listening. Repetition helps too, doesn't it? I bet 100% of you know that Folgers is good to the last drop. I bet 100% of you know that there's a guy named Jake that works for State Farm and he wears khakis. It's because you've heard the commercials. But what do you remember from the sermon? What did you hear? There's drama in this parable. The climax comes when the owner of the vineyard says, even though the tenants killed not only my first batch and second batch of servants, I will send my one and only son. They will Respect him. The owner of the vineyard representing God the Father is gracious and kind enough to the tenants to give them another chance to give his son the fruit, and yet he does not hold back his son. God spared not his son. They plotted against his son and killed him. Jesus says, what will the owner do to the tenants when he returns? 
he eventually says to them, have you never read the Scriptures? This is ironic because the scribes and Pharisees were reputable for knowing the Scriptures inside and out. And friends, we might be sure that to know the Scriptures might mean that we have not only read the Scriptures and studied them, but that we have heard the Scriptures. It's one thing to read the Scriptures. It's another thing to hear them. It's almost like we have to get all the distractions out of the way to be alone with the Lord where we can actually hear what He's saying to us. I remember at one time having a backache and a toothache at the same time. That was fun. My wife said, honey, what can I do? I said, I need to hear from the book of Job. Start reading to me from the book of Job. I wasn't focused on my aches and pains, but on what was being read. I was focused on what I was listening to. And soon the pain began to subside. Some of you may be sick and tired of current events. Why not tune in to Radio Yahweh? That is what a Vietnam veteran calls the Word of God. Radio Yahweh. We have a direct line, a direct link to hear the good news of the Gospel every time we need. But we need to make that choice to crack open the good book, to look, to listen, to hear what He is whispering to us or what He is shouting at us. Reminds me of a quote by C.S. Lewis, and I close with this. God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pains. It is His megaphone to rouse a deaf world. May we continue to listen for and listen to the voice of the Lord. Amen.
Thank you, Walter, for reminding us of God's amazing grace. And now you who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, who live in love and peace with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament for your comfort and humbly bowing to make your honest confession to Almighty God. Heavenly Father, please show forth among us the presence of your life-giving Word and Holy Spirit to sanctify us and your whole church through this sacrament. Grant that all who share in the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ may be one in Him and remain faithful in love and hope. The Lord Jesus, on the night He was betrayed, took bread And after giving thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and after giving thanks, said, This is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And now will you join with me for praying the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And as we tear away the cellophane, making our way to the wafer, we say this is the body of Christ broken for us. Let us take and eat together. And now we have the blood of Christ shed for us, shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Let's take and drink together. Amen. Now those of us that have been refreshed at the Lord's table... May the love of God, the grace of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all. And now will you join with me for our prayer of thanksgiving. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us join for the hymn, or no, the benediction. (laughs) May the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord's face shine upon us and turn His countenance toward us and give us peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we'll close with, Here I am, Lord.